Hi there. I want to talk about mic correction curves and how to import them and use them within smart software, but also possibly create your own microphone correction curve. Omnidirectional measurement microphones usually have a pretty flat frequency response, but are not always perfect. And most manufacturers of high quality measurement microphones will provide a correction file for these imperfections in the frequency response. Here is an example of the Isomcon EMX7150, where tests have been conducted to measure the frequency response of this microphone. So we can see here how it complies to the IEC standard to comply for a class one certified microphone. And on the right hand side here, is the calibration that needs to be done um, per frequency section or frequency band. Now a calibration file is usually just a text document that uh, looks like this. So you have frequency and you have the amplitude offset to compensate for the imperfections in the microphone. As we can see with this microphone, it's most of the offset is below one decibel. In Smart, we have the option to import mic correction curves. Um, when we um, go to Options and Mic Correction Curve, I already have some of them imported here, but we can then go and choose to import correction curves um, from somewhere on our desktop. Usually manufacturers will supply these um, on a website download link or they'll email it to you if you request it with the serial number of the microphone that you purchased. Currently in my setup for this demonstration, I have a um, EMX7150 plugged into channel 1 of my preamp. And we'll also be comparing uh, RTA420 measurement microphone from Rational Acoustics. Firstly, you need to import the mic correction curve. And we can do this at the mic correction curve um, options menu. Then to implement the mic correction curve, that is done on the IO config window, which is under config, IO config. And this can be done on the channel where the microphone is plugged into your preamplifier or your interface. So currently I have imported the correction file for the EMX. It has two correction file, one for free field and one for diffuse field. And you can go read up on where the different correction curves should be used. Now let's say for instance, you have a microphone like the RTA420 that doesn't necessarily come with a correction curve. But you want your microphones, you might be using the two microphones to measure the same sound system, and you want them to give you a very similar response. So how do we apply a correction curve to make sure that the RTA420 is also giving us the flattest response as possible? Let's first look at what the difference is in the frequency response between these two microphones. I'll first start off in this, the spectrum view. And let's go and just select no correction curve on channel one where the EMX is plugged into. So if I look at the Evo, one input, so I have a lot of crickets around me and that's at the six kilohertz range. <laughs> and then channel two is the RTA 420. I'm gonna play some pink noise through the um, through a little loudspeaker that I have here. It doesn't perform really well below 60 hertz. Um, that's just the setup that I have at the moment. So let's play some pink noise and I will capture these traces. Having a look at 
the two responses. Evo channel one is the Isomcon microphone and Evo channel two is the RTA420. Let's uh, have a look at that. So we can, I've tried to get the gain very similar in the, in, um, at one kilohertz to be a center point in our frequency band. And um, we can see that they're very similar at the one kilohertz point, but the green trace, which is the EMX, isn't as sensitive in the higher frequencies, but it does provide better low frequency as opposed to the RTA, which is the opposite. It gives slightly better high frequency, but doesn't have a great low frequency response. Now we can see that is this is very, very minimal. Um, still, there is a difference between the two and I'd like to have them have the same response. And the easiest way to do that is to create a calibration file for the microphone. Let's um, have a look at applying a diffuse field um, correction curve on channel one. So I'm just going to delete these two trays. Oh, let's not. So let's play the same pink noise and compare the two. So we can already see the difference between the two where the mic correction curve for the diffuse field brings that high frequency a bit better into balance with the RTA, but we're still lacking on the low frequency with the RTA 420. So what I did is in the transfer function, I created three transfer functions. Now, if I go here, we can see that the measurements uh, channel is the EMX. If I go here, the second transfer function, the RTA420 is my measurement signal. And then for the third transfer function, I want to have my EMX as the reference because this one has the calibration file loaded on it. And I want all other microphones plugged into my system to replicate the response of this microphone. And then the RTA420 is my... Um, measurement mic. So I want to see what the difference is between the EMX and the RTA 420. Now currently, as the picture um, shows, uh, there is a loudspeaker mounted on the wall. It's only a five inch in horn. So we're not getting a very full range response. As we can see from here, it does drop off a little bit um, below 50 Hertz. Then I have two microphones um, the EMX and the RTA 420 positioned at a 45 degree angle to the loudspeaker with the capsules as close together as possible without touching. So they take up the same physical space. Usually this is done in a lab with more expensive equipment and then you get a true correction file. But if you are on site and you just want to make sure that your microphones are reading more similar, this is what you can do. Okay, so let's start off and have a look at the two um, transfer functions in comparison to each other. So that is the EMX transfer function and the RTA transfer function. Okay, so there's the comparison between the two microphones. Now, one thing to note, uh, the RTA 420 does come out wired pin three hot and that results directly into a polarity inversion. So if I go shift E on my keyboard um, or go to, I'm not actually too sure what the menu command is. <laughs> I um, just usually do the input meters. There we go, shift E. Um, then you can view each of the input meters of the device that you have active. And I have inverted the polarity on the RTA 420. 
So now they will read the same phase response. If I switch off this polarity inversion, you'll see how the RTA 420 is now 180 degrees shifted compared to the EMX. So let me just go back and move this polarity inversion back on. Now, the, the transfer function I'm really interested in is the difference between these two microphones, where the EMX is my reference and the RTA is my measurement. So I'm actually going to switch these two off and just switch this one on, and let's see what happens now. So what we are looking at now is the EMX being the reference signal and the RTA, the measurement signal. So we are now measuring the um, frequency response of the RTA in comparison to the EMX. And we can see that there's that drop off in low frequency. It doesn't go further than 45 because the loudspeaker is not generating that. Um, so we can't measure below that. Usually, if you can, um, get a subwoofer and place it um, with the mid-high speaker as well, so we can measure all the way down. Then, um, you can see that it's, it's relatively flat, considering we had a 48 octave. Um, and then at the high frequency, we get quite a lot of interference. Now, this can be due to the fact that the EMX has got a smaller capsule, than the RTA 420, but also because of that physical spacing. I mean, if we have a look at uh, at the top here, uh, where it says in meters, the wavelength distance, that's 0 0.03 meters, uh, which is very, very small. So any, any physical distance between those two microphone capsules will give us that little bit of interference, okay? But it's not the end of the world. Um, this is just a, a home experience. You can you can try and shift these mics closer together to get a better um, physical positioning so that they are um, capturing the same information. But uh, I just want to try and get a bit of a smoother response here to show you how to then turn this response into a calibration file or a mic correction file for the RTA 420. So. So considering the limitations of my setup, this is the closest that I could get it. So what we do now is I want to have this curve inserted as a mic correction curve on this channel uh, where the RTA 420 is plugged into. So the way that I do that is all transfer function files can be exported to ASCII files. So we go and right click on the captured trace and we go copy to ASCII. Then we go to an Excel spreadsheet and we paste all of this information. Now what we want to do is we actually want to get rid of the phase and the coherency information. My correction curves only consider frequency and magnitude. They do not consider phase and coherency. So if I delete these two, uh, let's delete that as well. Um, what we also want to do is uh, we know that anything below 45, there is a no correction. Um, I wonder what happens with the asterisk. Do I need to delete it? If I delete it, it's going to assume zero, which might not be a good thing. Um, let's leave it in and see what happens first. Okay, so if I go back to my text file, we can see that this isomcon file just has a bit of information about the microphone, gives me the sensitivity, but it doesn't actually give, give me headings in terms of 10 and or in terms of frequency and magnitude. If, if I have a look at another correction file, so this correction file was sent to me by Earthworks for a M30 measurement microphone. Now, interesting here, we can see that it doesn't do any correction 
below 780 hertz and it doesn't have any frequencies um, listed there at all so i assume that uh, well even with this file there's there's no heading of magnitude or frequency so let me go ahead and delete everything uh, underneath 45 or everything above 45 I'm just going to scroll down and see if there's any more asterisks i mean we can see that it's it's pretty good there's some some frequencies here that are going above 4 dbs but I suspect that's got to do with that waviness over there um, just because of our perfect measurement setup. Okay, so no asterisks, everything looks all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these two columns. We're going to create a new file. And we're going to paste it over here. And we are going to save this. Save as, we'll go to desktop. And we're going to call this RTA 420 um, measured with EMX 7150 uh, EMX 7150 reference. Yeah. So I'll save that on my desktop. Now I can go into Smart and go into Options, My Correction Curve and import this my correction curve and there we go then to go to my IO config I can now pull up this RTA 420 correction curve that I've just created now if I activate the pink noise you can see well I don't even need to activate it it already flattens it um, but let me play some pink noise Now see that with the uh, my correction curve inserted on the RTA 420, we're getting a near flat response between the RTA 420 and the EMX 7150. So now I can with more confidence go out knowing that these two microphones have a very similar response just due to the my correction curve. Okay, great. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I hope to bring out a video to explain amplitude calibration um, to you as well. When I get some time, I will do that video. Great. Thank you very much. Catch you on the next one.